Uh, so my talk is going to be fairly advanced. This assumes that you're already at least a little bit familiar with configuration of the execute node or the start D um, and of the way uh, GPUs works. And this is some more advanced techniques um, uh, and talking about a new feature that we've added. Uh, all right, so the motivation. Uh, I have a machine, let's say, and it has GPUs, and I want to do some unusual things. I want to maybe reserve a GPU for interactive use. So I want to say I have some GPUs, but not all of them are for Condor. Some of them I want to set aside. Um, maybe I want to give some projects preferred access to the GPU nodes, and other projects can only use the GPUs if those preferred projects aren't currently using them. Um, and in a preemptible way, that is, if a preferred project shows up and wants to use the new G the GPUs, it kicks off the, the backfill. Um, and uh, you may also sometimes want to take a GPU away from a start D without having to restart the start D. I'm mean, going to talk about all of these uh, techniques. Uh, so the overview, this is really my whole talk. Use multiple slot types. Um, this lets you control which GPUs are assigned to which P slots. Um, and then the third piece, not related to slot types, um, I'm going to show you how to take GPUs, what we call offline. Offline just means the start is not allowed to use them. Um, okay. I wonder if the batteries on this are dying. Ah, okay. So first off, just a brief recap. Uh, cap. This is what GPUs look like to Condor. Uh, GPUs in Condor are a special case of what we call non-fungible custom resources. Yeah, a lot of big words. Um, so Condor doesn't actually know anything about GPUs. Um, it's just a type of resource with a particular name. We have settled on GPUs, plural as the name. Um, and the start will run a program that tells it how many GPUs they are and what properties the GPU has. And each GPU is going to have an identity. This is why we use the term non-fungible. Two GPUs are not interchangeable. There is not a pool of GPU memory that we can just allocate. We have to say, no, you get this GPU and its memory or not. Um, if the operating system ever did actually have first class support for GPUs and not through some third party library, usually NVIDIA, we might be able to change this. But right now, this is just the world we live in. So we run this process. We get back uh, information about the GPUs. This is organized as common properties, the things that all the GPUs are um, the same. And property is distinct for each GPU. And you will always get at least one property that's distinct for each GPU, and that's its ID. Right, what Start does is ingest this and construct a property class add internally for each of the GPUs that it knows about. Um, then when it creates slots, and uh, initially on startup, it will create all the partitionable slots all the static slots, um, it will then decide which specific GPUs are assigned to which specific slots. And that cannot change without restarting the start date. Right? The property adds for those GPUs assigned to a specific slot are then put into that slot class add. Uh, the property adds that are not assigned are not there, not present. Um, in more recent uh, version. So in Condor 10x, um, we added uh, another attribute, not assigned, but available. Uh, the available attribute is um, the subset of the assigned GPUs that are currently available for matchmaking. This is added specifically so that you can match make against specific GPUs based on their pro properties. And so if it's a partitionable slot, for instance, once uh, a GPU is assigned to a child dynamic slot, it is no longer available in the P slot. Does that make sense? All right. So first step is when you start up, 
you may wish to decide which specific GPUs are assigned to which specific static and partitionable slots, and this is how you do it. Um, you can actually do this all on one line if, uh, is it here? Yes. Um, if you can shove all of this onto the line without any spaces. But because of backward compatibility, the single line parser for slot types does not allow you have, to have spaces inside the definition of a particular resource, right? And so we added this multi-line form to give you a little bit more freedom and flexibility. Other than that, this is exactly the same. It's just a little bit more forgiving about spaces within a single resource definition. So the way this works is you can have a quantity, and by the way, this can be just the word auto, or it can be a percentage. It could say 100%, for instance. You don't have to say two. Um, and then an expression which is evaluated against those GPU property ads. Now, if you don't have two GPUs that meet this capability, the start date doesn't start, which is why you might want to use auto here. On the other hand, if it's important that you have both of those, then you want the start date not to start. Um, this is something we're debating, by the way. Um, in next version, in 24, the start date may go ahead and start up, but without any valid slots, and instead just advertise itself as broken to the collector. But we don't do that yet. Uh, here's a, an alternative form. Uh, there's a special case. If this expression is a string, then we just compare it to the GPU IDs. So this is a quick and dirty way to assign one GPU to a specific slot, a specific GPU, not just a whichever one comes up that has the right properties. Um, by the way, this cannot currently be a list, but if anybody wants it to be, it wouldn't be that hard to fix. Just talk to me. Jake, still no. Ah, okay. Uh, all right, so the next step in this process, I didn't skip anything, did I? No, okay. Uh, the next step of this process is to use multiple slot types, right? Um, because multiple slot types allow you to specialize a lot of the start date policy knobs per slot type. So you can have a separate start expression for each slot type. Type. You cannot have a separate start expression for each slot, but you can for each slot type. Um, so you can say something like start the adders is a global. I want to add an attribute to every slot. Um, I want that attribute to be interactive slot name. Uh, and I want its default value to be false. But for slot type two, the value should be true. And now I have declared slot type two is an interactive slot type. And presumably we would also do things like say, okay, it now only matches interactive jobs and I wanna bind specific GPUs to that slot. And this is, I think you can see how all of this uh, comes together. Um, by the way, this is very similar uh, to what we actually do in our CHTC pool. Uh, pretty much all of our GPU machines have what we call the dual, or in some case, triple layer config. Um, okay. Um, the other thing I said I was going to show you how to do is to reserve a GPU for non-Condor use. Um, this is a configuration variable in the start D. Um, this can be a list of GPU IDs. Um, if this is set at startup, those are just omitted from the pool of GPUs that can be assigned to slots at creation time. That's simple. This GPU is just not managed by Condor if you do it at startup. Um, if you add this and then reconfig, um, the resource bundle of a slot cannot be altered after, after it is created. So for static and partitionable slots, we can't take it away from that slot but we can mark it as unavailable. And so this will drop out of the list of available GPUs for the slots. It will still be in the list of assigned GPUs, but the matchmaker won't see it. New jobs 
will not match there. Um, for static slots, unfortunately, this isn't perfect. Uh, this does not kick off jobs that are currently using that GPU. If you want that to happen, you have to do that explicitly running condor vacate commands or whatever. Uh, and for static slots, unfortunately, um, the, the static slots predate the notion of resource requests in the job. And therefore, where static slots can't assume that a job requests GPUs and can't know if a job wants GPUs. And so this doesn't fully work for static slots. Um, but the default now for start D's, if you choose nothing, is P slots only anyway. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, one other thing. The default for 23, I don't know, 23.5, I think, and later, um, is GPU detection is on by default now. You no longer have to opt into that. We just do it. Uh, you can turn that off if it bothers you. Um, all right, so that's the first part, start deconfiguration of GPUs. Any questions before I move on? Okay, now the new stuff. Um, we have added into the 23X series first-class support for what we call Bologna backfill. Bologna backfill was invented by some really clever Condor admins um, in Bologna, I am told, uh, way before I started. So 15 years ago, 20 years ago, something, a long, long time ago. What the backfill strategy is, is you basically tell the start D that it has twice as many resources as it really does. So we say you are managing two times the Texas CPUs, two times detected memory, um, and all of that, then you create two slot types, or actually when they first did this, they did this with really complicated start expressions, but, but now you can do it with slot types. Um, you, slot type A gets 100% of the resources. The slot type B also gets 100% of the resources. So this is of, of actual, this is why you double the amount of resources to begin with. Um, and then you write these really tricky start expressions so that start type B sees that slot A is using a resource that it is also using. And so the preempt expression of that slot goes true, the jobs get kicked off, um, and you now have this uh, primary and secondary slot type uh, mechanism. Um, we have made that first class in Condor. Oh, I'm sorry, let me talk a little bit of why, why we made this first class, because that was clever, but some big problems. Number one, the pool size as seen by the negotiator is now twice what it really is. Um, this impacts quotas, right? You either have to account for this in your quota allocations in the negotiator um, or things can get weird. And in particular, in some cases wrong. Uh, the other problem is this is contention first we actually start jobs on the slots, uh, the backfill slots. Then we start jobs on the primary slots. We are, for a short period of time, using the same resource more than once. Uh, and then we notice this contention and we kick the jobs off. Uh, this does not work for GPUs. Um, number one, it can't work for GPUs because they're non-fungible. And so it's really, really hard, if not impossible, to write the expressions where we detect the collision in the first place. But you just can't have two processes sharing the GPU and not have them interfere with each other. And you can do that for CPUs and memory, generally speaking, without causing the system to fall over completely. Um, the other problem with this is that this required a technique called cross-slot advertising. You put special expressions in your start D that said, um, I want this attribute from slot one to be advertised as slot one underscore blah in slot two. Uh, the problem with this is uh, this works fine if you have two slots or eight slots starts going to be a problem with eight slots because this is X squared on the number of slots. We are now looking at a world 
we have machines in the CHTC pool today that have 256 cores. And we are looking at 1,000 cores, machines, coming down the road, and X squared on the number of slots, that just doesn't work. And so we needed a better way to do that. By the way, if you do need cross-slot advertising, find me. We have a tricky way of doing this that doesn't, that isn't X squared. Uh, but we really don't like doing it at all. Uh, the other thing about cross-slot advertising is anything, anytime any slot changes state, it invalidates all the slots. And so you end up sending all of them up to the collector. Uh, when, when a job starts, you send the whole flock of slots to the collector, and we don't like having to do that. Uh, okay. So the new backfill slot mechanism in the start D is Bologna. It has the same kind of philosophy, but without most of the flaws. Um, basically, you take a slot type, you set the backfill attribute on it, and what that does is it tells the start D when it is provisioning this slot type, it should use a second shadow set of resource. So the start D actually has, when it detects 16 cores, it says, okay, I have 16 cores and I have 16 shadow cores. I will provision primary slots off the 16 cores and I will provision backfill slots off the shadow cores. And as long as I don't run out of either, start D is happy and it starts right up. Um, shadow cores recognize, or this, this shadow resource thing, recognize that they can conflict with the primary and they track that continuously, uh, well, on creation of slots, because that's the only time we really have to do it. Uh, that's not quite simple. Um, on creation of slots or activation, depending on you know, how that works. But uh, the... Uh, Backfill slots get a couple of special attributes. One is they are advertised to be backfill slots. You can tell, you can match against them specifically to say, I'm looking for slots that have the backfill slot attribute. But they also get this special attribute resource conflict. That will be the names of the resources that this backfill is using that are in conflict with a primary slot, an active primary slot. So a, a partitionable slot doesn't count. A dynamic slot does, um, a static slot does if it is active, if, if it is running jobs. Um, so when this resource conflict attribute is empty, we don't have a conflict. When it is not empty, we have a conflict. And so to put all this together and to get backfill slots that actually evict jobs when things uh, go backfill or uh, uh, conflict, um, you just have to add this expression or something like it to your slot type two preempt. Now, right now you have to do this by hand. It is not automatic. And because this is the names of the resources that conflict, this does give you some interesting power. So you can say, for instance, um, I, I'm okay with this conflict as long as it's just memory. If it's not, or if it's just CPUs, then it's okay. We'll allow a little bit of conflict, but not GPUs or not, or not specific GPUs or whatever. But this is, this is the expression that just kicks. I'm sorry. Wow, that was aggressive. Um, mm, ah, there we go. Um, this is the expression that just kicks things when they conflict. Now, this still has the flaw where it is um, first uh, over provisioning and then kicking jobs off. We are going to fix this. It doesn't look like it's gonna make it in the 23X timeframe, but it is on the list of things we're gonna do where we're gonna essentially, we're gonna go ahead and create the dynamic slot, but we're gonna delay activation of that dynamic slot um, until the conflicting resources have been uh, vacated. Um, there's reasons why we want to do this that have nothing to do with Bologna backfill, actually. Um, so we're working towards that. Uh, the other thing you want to keep in mind if you're using this is you should make it so that your jobs match either backfill slots or primary, but not both. Um, if you do make it match both, it's pretty easy to end up with a situation where a job starts on a backfill slot 
and then later gets matched to a primary slot by the negotiator, uh, but it's too late. It's already running on a backfill, right? Um, or alternatively, uh, it can bounce from backfill to primary. It won't bounce from primary back to backfill typically, but it, this causes some friction in the system. And so you kind of don't want to do this. Um, it, it's not the things don't work. You just get a certain amount of bad pet put out of it. Um, all right, now putting all of this together. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, I did not point it out, but this is only backfilling CPUs on the GPU machines. See what I've done there? This doesn't have any GPUs, but it can, right? That's the difference. This is now backfilling CPUs and GPUs on machines that have GPUs. And this is the configuration we mostly use in CHTC. Um, it's actually not this simple because we don't use the configuration templates. We use, you know, spell it out by hand and it's split across multiple configuration files. But this is effectively the thing that we do. All right, any questions? This is actually the end of my presentation. Um, but I do have one more slide since we have time. Uh, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, it may take me all of that time to get this slide to advance though. Ah, there we go. What? We must be running ahead for all of them because I wasn't slated, I was slated for 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is a new thing we've added. This is nothing to do with what I've been talking, except it's still about GPUs. Uh, a new thing we added in 23X is we've added some new GPU uh, submit keywords in your submit language. Um, you could request and require GPUs before. Um, you can now do this. This is the shorthand version for the typical GPU requirements. GPU's memory, minimum memory equals some quantity. And by the way, you can use the size suffixes because this is first class submit language, whereas in the other one you couldn't because that was just class add expressions. Uh, so these two things uh, use one or the other. They do the same thing, they both uh, put in the job add a require GPUs capability greater than seven sub expression. Um, and um, and the, this is actually, this is a little bit wrong. What actually, what this one actually does is capability greater than job attribute containing the value seven. Um, and that's one of the reasons we added this is you can now using, if you use this new mechanism, um, you can now run Condor Q show me all the jobs with a minimum memory request greater than seven. You can actually write that query, which is impossible if you're trying to pull that information outside, uh, out of a, a, a required GPUs expression. Okay, that is legitimately the end of my talk.